Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, the beautiful, the resplendent, the effervescent Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to begin a new raccoon oh journey. New trash. New trash for us to eat. Hopefully, we're going to like it. If yep. this episode is any indication, it is going to be stinky trash. It seems like it's going to be crazy. Bottom of the dumpster, yes. juicy trash. I love it. We're going to be talking about Unexpected, yes. which I think we're on season five or six. six. Season six. Yeah. On TLC. Now, yeah. Have you ever watched this before? No, I've never watched it. But I was a total teen mom whore yeah. back in the day. So not exactly teen mom, but yeah. very similar. Very similar. So before we get into it, we just want to give you our disclaimer, please. Had you wife and had your kids. This is a politically in correct podcast we say a lot of bad words we have dumb opinions especially beatrice and so if you're sensitive and you get your panties in a twist <laughs> then you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby but if you're ready to hate and cap on a bunch of teenage hoes <laughs> welcome to this dumpster yeah and if you are down and ready to talk crap with us be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon <gasps> patreon.com slash reality tv cringe we got so much bonus content up on there okay yes <laughs> when you say that i just laugh why um, i don't know there's just something about the okay okay <laughs> um if you are watching on youtube please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe Every little thing you do helps us to grow in the algorithm, and that helps us to draw the raccoons into the dumpster, baby. And get fatter. And which is all we want. Yeah. We just want to get fatter. That's and all we it's working. Do. Yeah. <laughs> We're Especially for you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, honey. I'm just kidding. So, no, it's okay. So, my first question to you is Were you a teenage hoe? Because, <laughs> let me guess. Let me guess. You were. No, I wasn't. You weren't breaking it open? No, I was you not. You weren't busting I it open? I was such a laying prude. Laying it low and spreading it wide? <laughs> I was such a prude. I was such a prude. Your really? daughter was more of a hoe than me. What? Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> what You're you, her mom. What do you mean? <laughs> she was more of a hoe than me. By like, not by that much. Okay. <laughs> fine she's almost 30 i yeah. can take it you can't it's take kind it. of difficult having a lesbian daughter because she has all of her girlfriends yeah and you just assume they're girlfriends and then one day you open the door and somebody's eating a box <laughs> and they're making out they're doing something and there that never happened good don't get jealous oh my god that'd be you embarrassing get so crazy <laughs> i do i do well what do you think do you think i was a hell uh, yeah well no you i know this you weren't you weren't <laughs> until you met your first husband well, I wasn't a hoe when yeah. I met my first husband. He was my first. Your first everything. everything. Yeah. You were and a hoe up, later in I, life. Yeah, I was a, honey, in my 40s, I was a hoe. You were a MILF hoe. Once upon a time, not long ago, <laughs> I was a hoe. And I'm a man. Eh, eh. Yes, I, I enjoyed myself a little later in life. Yeah. But honestly, that's when you can enjoy yourself because mm. you understand your body Ugh. and your sexual urges. And as women, we peak sexually in terms of our libidos in our 40s. Thank God MILF Manor wasn't around <laughs> in your 40s. <laughs> oh Although I would have killed it. Objectively, you would have been the prettiest, most natural one there. Intelligent. Yeah. Kind. A woman of quality. That's right. <laughs> I would have run. Milf Manor. Oh my, oh my God. We're reacting to that on Patreon, by the <laughs> yes, way, yeah. you guys. And that's crazy. Yes, so. I think we have a big reaction coming out next yes. week. This week. Something. Next week. Whatever. I think it's this week. It's next week. <laughs> but we're reacting to it. Yes. Um, okay, so let's get into this episode. Well, first of all, do you have any takeaways uh, about it? I was actually surprised how young these kids were. I so mean, young. like Babies. the 15 year olds that are pregnant. I'm like, what are you doing? do it sophomores in high school oh my god i can't and i'm side-eyeing a lot of these parents a lot of them yeah. i'm like what are you doing well it's so weird to me how it's such like ancestral energy like so many teen moms had teen moms who had teen moms that's my family i literally come from a family of generational like all the way to my great great grandmother they were all teen moms i'm the oldest you broke old the fart. cycle i am before wow. that my mom was the oldest one and she was still a teen mom at 19. <laughs> wow so i come from that so i know firsthand it's totally like a generational thing mm -hmm. it used to be back in the day it was like linked to more like poverty like generational poverty you didn't have as much access to education and stuff but now it's just a bunch of these 
kids on TikTok and stuff. I'm just gyrating. I, I, I feel like an old lady talking about these kids. Like, what are you doing? I know they're doing their TikTok dances even in this show. It is, and they're so bad at it. It's these, those really three bad. white little girls, the cheerleaders. I'm oh, just like, oh my god, your cheerleaders, move your hips. I know. I mean, at least try to dance. You look so corny. It's I terrible know. and cringing for you. You're going to be cringing for yourself in about ten years. Oh, 100. percent But they're kids on this show. I'm like. Y'all are talking about peeing yourselves and all this crazy stuff. I'm like, this is embarrassing. Very much so. Um, And troubling. Yeah. And sad, even though, in all fairness, and in the spirit of transparency, I was really hoping my daughter would be a teen mom. Why? (laughs) Well, because you wanted a grandbaby. I I mean, she was 15 and 16, and I'm like, it'll be okay. I mean, I would totally help you raise the baby. She's like, I'm a lesbian. It's not (laughs) happening. oh but my yeah, god i would have been okay with it oh my god meanwhile my mom was like screaming at me like don't ever get pregnant in your teens you'll ruin your life like it was always like a thing we were told so we were scared straight <laughs> yeah. well it's just interesting as you watch these families like how some families are open and equipped to handle it mm-hmm. and some of these parents are the worst they're terrible yeah i know so let's get into some of these couples so I've never watched any of these seasons. I know that there's going to be one returning couple Mm -hmm. on this season. We'll get to them later. But it seems like most of these people are new. I think so. Besides like Jenna. Jenna's been on prior seasons. But we start with Emily and Nate. So Emily is 18. Nate is 16. They're from my home state. Of course. Astoria, Oregon, which is like my dream area of the country to live. Really? Oh my God, it's so beautiful A lot of meth labs. No, it's beautiful. The smell of meth in the morning. It's right on the river and it's just so gorgeous. I love it. Looked, it looked really pretty. I was wondering where they were. It's beautiful. I've been there many, many times. My aunt and uncle live there still. But they're from Oregon and Emily is 37 weeks pregnant. She's a senior in high school. She's going to be graduating and leaving her young little boyfriend there to finish out high school. And he'll be so happy that she does oh because God. she moms him the entire time. Because he's a child. He is a child. He doesn't know how to be an adult, and nor should he, but I mean, he's going to have to figure it out. He is, unfortunately, and they've only been together for 11 months, which means that he got pregnant after only two months of dating. Immediately. And Emily says, that's just how relationships are nowadays. They just start with sex. And I'm like, Uh, no, I'm not that old. And that's not how it was for me. I mean, hookup culture is totally a thing. It was a thing when I was in high school. I just didn't participate in it. Because I was a lame kid. (laughs) I didn't have anybody to hook up with me. (laughs) So that's why I didn't have it. But yeah, I just thought that was kind of a weird comment. She's like, relationships just start with sex. Well, she's dumb. She's 18 years old. She doesn't know what she's talking about. This is her one experience in life. So she thinks it's everybody's experience. And she knows how to do the experience the best. (sighs) She was very bossy. A little bit. This relationship is obvious. None of these relationships are ever going to work because they are too young. I mean, sometimes you'll get like the unicorn. Sure. And you'll have people who stay together. But like none of these relationships are going to work. And she just gives me bossy. She gives me bully. She gives me pushing him around. And I'm like, oh. It's a risk to be for disaster Mm. and he just looks like he's dead inside (laughs) i mean he does not look happy about it but i'm like what 16 year old would be happy about it you know what i mean it's like it's one of those things where it's like yeah a cool baby but i'm way too young to deal with Mm -hmm. this poor nate he races um dirt bikes dirt bikes which is something my cousin did we used to go to the same racetracks that he was at i was like were they cooking I meth? That. Were they cooking meth yeah sometimes okay <laughs> in the dumpster back <laughs> but it was fun okay so he okay. wants to go pro but he's probably not going to be of able to not. beatrice you'll never be a star <laughs> Nate, you'll never be pro. Well, my cousin was sponsored by big companies and stuff. He went pro for a few years. Uh, Well, he's not anymore. (laughs) Now he lives in Weed, California and grows his own marijuana. (laughs) So, Of course he does. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not even kidding. Um, But yeah, he wants to go pro. Nate has all these big dreams and he's sad about it because he's probably going to have to give up racing. He's already had to get a job to support his baby mama. And uh, who's going to be coming to live with him and his mother, Taryn. Oh, my God. When she gives birth, she has no relationship with her own biological mother. Yes. And I'm not sure why. We haven't really gotten into that yet. She is close to her father, who we mm-hmm. did not meet in this episode. But for whatever reason, probably to be close to the father, she's going to be moving in with Taryn, who is Nate's mom. And we already know 
this is going to be a disaster. Taryn has three kids of her own. The youngest is two. And she's a single mom too. Yeah, like so her husband bounced. Mm -hmm. And so it's just her and you're going to be moving in this bully, yeah. bossy, controlling, loud-mouthed girl. And it's a recipe for disaster. Well, and they don't even really know each other that mm -hmm. well. Like Emily said she's only met her a couple times, but she likes her enough to move in with her. Emily's also dumb because she hasn't told her dad that she wants to move in with her. Yeah. So her dad's going to be devastated. Yeah. Because her dad's going to be like, what the fuck? Emily straight up said she thinks that Taryn will provide more support for her with a new baby. And I don't know if that's like a dig at her dad, but I'm like, it seems like your dad did a... Well, well maybe her dad is working all the time. Maybe. And maybe Taryn, she said she was a single mom. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she's a stay-at-home mom. I don't know. I wonder if she works. I don't know. So maybe she's just going to be more present and that's what Emily yeah. needs. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to take a while for me to remember these kids. Yeah, I kind of felt for Taryn because she doesn't seem happy about this situation at all. She doesn't seem to like Emily either. I don't either. She said her first impression of her was like, who is this chick? She stole my baby. And, and I'm why? like, yikes. Well, and Nate seems like he don't respect his mama enough because he told his mom that he got a girl pregnant over text. In the other room. <laughs> he was in his bedroom. She's like making dinner and yeah. he texts her and says, oh, by the way, and I'm really sorry in advance because this is terrible <laughs> that I did this, but we had sex like three times and she's pregnant. <laughs> And mom's like, oh my God. get out here right now. Right now. And of course, he was worried she was going to be mad. And I'm sure she was. She's acted like she wasn't, but I'm sure she was pissed off. But it's like, girl, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Toothpaste is out of the toothpaste thing. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Gross. They are going to be a couple to watch, that's for sure. And then we have the youngest couple, I think, of the season, Kaylee and Graham. They're both 15. They are so young. Oh, from Marion, Kentucky. She was a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. She can't wait to get back to cheerleading mm -hmm. and tumbling and doing all that stuff because she thinks, because she's a baby, that life's just going to go right back to the way that it was and mom's going to take care of everything. She has no idea, no, no none. capacity to understand how much her life is going to change. What did you think of her just in terms of the vibe of life? Oh, she's just so young and naive kind like of sweet though she's sweet but i'm just like you're also so dumb <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> but i'm just like oh my god and i kind of felt bad for her because she talked about she had to quit sport she had to quit cheerleading and ever since she got pregnant like her whole town basically all of her friends everybody at school her church like everybody's totally judging her and i'm like yeah you're in a small southern town like that's what they do there it doesn't mean it's right so i felt bad for her on that regard she lost her virginity at 14 though i'm like oh god that's Girl, so young in high school my best friend got pregnant at 14 <gasps> i think she had her son at 14 or just turned 15 wow. I that was her maid young. of honor at 14. Oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> yes. Well, my poppy's first wife was 14 and she got pregnant at 15. Wow. Yeah, and had to quit high school and everything. It's so terrible. Well, and you think we've come a long way. Like yeah. the times have changed and we're generally more educated and have different sensibilities about these things like reproduction and reproductive rights. But guess what? Nope. Times don't change. Everything... Nope is the same yep and for a while there because of teen mom and all of those other shows on mtv it became kind of popular to yeah. be a teen mom like i knew a few girls in high school that were pregnant and had their babies and stuff at graduation and it was just like a normalized mm -hmm. thing but now it seems like it's hopefully starting to change like maybe people are starting to learn i don't know i don't think so there's you have nothing 14 year olds doing the boinky boink under the sun of course they are if you're not gonna have parents that are teaching their children and observing their children. And in this economy, everybody's got to work. So mom's working, dad's working, grandma's working, everybody's working. So these kids be fucking. Oh, for sure. Kids are fucking while well, everybody's for working. Sure. Yep, creating more mouths to feed. Well, and Kaylee's parents are kind of weird too because her mom is only 40. Mm. She had- Groomed. Totally was groomed, groomed. by her daddy who's 59. Right, and met her when she was 18. And he was 37. Married her. Yes, and then impregnated her immediately. Oh. And she was 19 too. So she, Kaylee's mom, Mandy is her name, talks about how being a teen mom is hard. Like, And she was 19. She was a little bit older. That's how old my mom was when mm -hmm. she had me. And let me tell you, 
it wasn't great. <laughs> I mean, right. not like not like my mom was a bad mom, but it's just like, you know, it was she's hard figure, for her. She's still kind of a kid. And it she's was hard for her. It out, of yeah. Course. And she used to talk about that all the time growing up. That was what scared us straight. Just talking about how hard it was to be 19, having to figure everything out as a single mom too. my mom, my baby, my sperm donor wasn't around. So mm-hmm. she had to figure it all out. And that sucked. So I don't know. I felt bad for Mandy because I think she just didn't ever expect Right. Her young baby to be out here hoeing around. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, are we having conversations with her? Because right. she seems to be in kind of a church culture. Mm-hmm. And so do you guys just talk about abstinence and purity rings? Or are you guys talking about sex and yeah. how to prevent pregnancies? Like, where's the educational aspect here? We're not talking about that yet. It's the first episode. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. I but mean, she seems very, uh, the mom, what's her name again? Mandy. She just seems very pinned up. Mm-hmm. almost repressed like uh not necessarily open and expressive and very very unhappy with the situation because she was groomed probably yeah. mm-hmm. i mean well and when kaylee said that she lost her virginity at 14 mandy was surprised she's like what i thought you were innocent so i'm like you're not talking to your kid right you're letting them have like unsupervised time with their phone probably in the internet and so that's how she met graham apparently who lives 30 miles away that's how she knows how to bust it open because she's been on porn huh <laughs> I mean, Come on, shit. people. Wake up. Like, what the hell? I don't know. And then this Graham kid. I, I just, I don't have much faith in him. I mean, he's a background character. He's an NPC. NPC. He has absolutely no consciousness. He's not plugged into the mainframe, honey. No. He's a child, too. Of course. He just seems so dead inside as well. He literally said having a baby is like an 18-year prison sentence. And I'm like... Kind of. Yikes. You're not wrong. I mean, it, I, comparing it to prison is a little harsh for me, but I'm, uh, I guess... It's a huge... It's a responsibility. It, well, it's a huge ramification. Commitment, yeah. And it's it's it's, it's going to be a big fucking deal for the rest of your life. Yeah. And somebody must be saying that to him at Probably. home. Somebody's letting him know, oh, your life is fucking over. Oh, totally. And he seems to be kind of teetering off into a depression as a result. Because we saw a preview and he's crying and he's very, very scared. And he lives 30 minutes away anyway yeah. from Kaylee. So I think we're just going to see him Homer Simpson kind of Distance back up out. into the hedges. Yeah. He's going to be like, peace out. You can take care of the baby. Yeah. He just seems totally detached. But it's weird because him and Kaylee have been together since they were 12. So they've been together for three years. He says, I found the one. Like, I love her. And I'm like, well, do you even know what that means right now? You're a zygote. Yeah. But um, he got a job. He quit sports. So he can could provide for Kaylee. Kaylee also got a part-time job. She's working during school. Making $8 an hour. I know. Poor Yikes. girl. Is that what the minimum wage is in America? I don't know. In Kentucky, probably. Not in California, honey. No, honey. <laughs> Not even in Texas anymore. No, uh-uh. Yeah, so I don't know. These kids are working hard. They both, I don't think they understand the ramifications of their decision. I don't think they understand what it's going to be like of having to take not. care of a baby. No, they're not going to know until it's happening. And even then, they're going to be relying on their parents for sure. I know. And that sucks because even Mandy says, like, I'm going to have to take extra shifts at mm-hmm. work so I can support the baby. Well, what is the 59-year-old dad doing? I don't know. He's retired. He had 10 kids. He's on Medicare. Before, he had 10 kids before Mandy. I know. He's just in this planet like, populating it. Or making two babies. Kids got two kids and a bunch of grandkids oh i thought it was 10 kids some i, don't I need know. to listen with both of you <laughs> and my eyes open <laughs> i think he's two kids he's got two kids and then uh kaylee and then he's got nine grandkids oh okay he's gonna be papa for the ninth time because he's an old fart he totally is i'm like i feel bad for mandy but i'm too. like girl you chose this so mm. it's kind of weird Um, They also talk about how Kaylee is super spoiled because she's about to turn 16 and she's like waitressing for her family at this restaurant she works at. And they're like, yeah, what do you want for your birthday besides a car? And she's like, I want an Apple watch. Yeah. And I'm like, excuse me? I was lucky if I got any of that. Yeah. My reward was no punishment. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That was my reward. I didn't get shit. I was poor as hell, but so spoiled. But then again parents this is the child that you have raised you did not discipline her you did not bring her up in the way that she should go and Mm -hmm. now here she is about to give birth heavy with child heavy with child child. (laughs) 
and wanting an Apple Watch from mommy and a car from daddy. Like, I can't. That's not the real world, especially if you're picking up shifts to pay for all of this. I know. So they obviously don't make a lot of you're money. You're not rich people, but you're still spoiling this girl. Is that really what you want to do? Is that working for you? That's wild to me. I can't stand when kids get spoiled. And Mandy even admits it. She's like, I know she's spoiled rotten. It's my fault. But what can you do? Uh, be a parent and uh, pick up extra shifts and tell her now that she's pregnant she don't get to be spoiled now she's got to earn that shit mm-hmm. that's what i would say but it's not my circus no nope, not your monkeys right and then we have jenna mm-hmm. and her son luca so i think jenna has been on prior seasons <clears throat> of unexpected yes, i was watching that season so yeah. i remembered jenna i remember that i think i stopped watching unexpected because of jenna oh. because previously she was so spoiled by her father mm. and she would talk back to him and she was just awful and i like couldn't take it anymore so i just stopped watching so seeing kind of the transit from who she was before and who she is now she has come a long way even though okay. she's probably still spoiled and She's still, I don't know, totally entitled, but she's a lot different. She seems to have matured quite a bit, and she's still dealing with this punk-ass Aiden. Oh, my God. He seems like a total piece of shit. From all of the flashbacks, I'm like, fuck this guy. He seems so terrible. So she had a baby with him named Luca. Jenna's currently 19. We see her flying back to her hometown in Pennsylvania because she's going to be picking up some of her stuff there because she's going to be moving or she wants to move down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And see, I was a little, I was judging her at first at the beginning of the episode because she talks about how she has an ongoing custody agreement and battle with Aiden, the baby daddy of Luca. And Aiden agreed to let her move to Myrtle Beach in exchange for her not demanding any child support from him. And I was like, that's so dumb. Mm -hmm. But then I saw all the flashbacks of Aiden and how much of an asshole he is. And I kind of understand where Jenna's coming from. Like she just wants to keep the peace, but it's like, at what point do you continue dealing with such an asshole who doesn't seem to care about Luca at all? Right. Which is super weird to me. No, and I think she even says in this episode, like the only reason he seems to care about him is when it's bothering me yes that's why he wants to care about him it's not because he has any genuine affection for the young boy and that's so toxic it's it's terrible and it's just like reminiscent of her dad's issues with her mom because Mm -hmm. her dad matt who's like 45 or whatever talks about how he had a horrible toxic relationship with her mom and they couldn't even co-parent because it was that bad i'm like okay cool so now it's just a generational cycle that's Mm -hmm. repeating with your daughter good job dad can we uncensor for a second yeah Okay, we are back from the uncensored bits. And if you guys want to hear those uncensored conversations, you do have to go to our Patreon. It's for patrons only. And we're just talking about some personal stuff that we don't want to share, like broadcast out into the whole world. Yeah. But back to Aiden and what's her name? Jenna? Jenna, yeah. So her father picks her up from the airport. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they're going to do is go to Aiden's house and drop off Luca. We can see Jenna getting some anxiety it starts to ratchet up she doesn't know what's gonna happen she says to the camera and I really felt for her in this moment she's like I don't know why like he just won't text me back that everything's okay when Luca is with him I don't know why he just won't send me a picture of Luca sleeping so I know he's okay like he doesn't give me an inch and it's not about me it's about like is my child safe i'm never without him exactly he just wants to play games oh i hate those kind of people i hate that shit too and like she even said before they even got into the custody custody issue she had luca 24 7 so he was making a stink about custody their original agreement was every other weekend but even then he never answers her phone calls he never answers her texts so she's just left wondering like Mm -hmm. okay what the hell and then she had said something too where she's like i don't feel like it's my responsibility to facilitate aiden having a relationship with luca like she's like i'm trying what i can and i'm trying to give Luca to him so he can spend time and develop a relationship so that Luca doesn't resent me in the future for keeping him away from his dad but at the same time it's like what can I do with somebody who doesn't want to make the effort and doesn't care which is a very mature mindset for a 19 year old which just kind of 
really does speak to how much maturing she has done since we saw her a few years ago yeah. on this show. Like she's come a long way. She's having to deal with adult real world problems and she has to co-parent with a jerk. I mean, she takes Luca there. She hands Luca to Aiden, the father, and says, well, what time should I come tomorrow to pick him up? And he literally just shuts the door in her face. They don't have a custody agreement, right? Because he didn't want to have to pay child support of $200 a month. And so... Well, they have a custody agreement now, but he's going to be giving it up in exchange for no child support so she can move. Okay. So there's an existing child custody arrangement. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. However, like to just shut the door in her face so she doesn't know when to come back. That's so crazy. When are you going to return the child? Like that is beyond the pale. This guy is such an asshole. I can't wait for her to move to Myrtle Beach and not have to deal with his horseshit. Well, and it seems like from the preview, he's going to be causing more issues. Mm -hmm. So like now they're going to be renegotiating a different custody agreement and he's going to be coming back with all these crazy terms to keep her or try to keep her in Pennsylvania and not allow her to move. So it's like, what is it, dude? Like, do you want to just keep fucking with her? Yes. And you're using the kid as a pawn. Like, yes. that's so messed up. Fuck you. Yep. Fuck you that's all the so way. That's so crazy to me. But I, I wonder if we'll see more of Aiden this season because it seemed like there was a lot of him in prior seasons and mm-hmm. I, I don't want to deal with him. I don't know how much we're going to see him. We'll probably hear about it because of the court proceedings. But I did see in like the preview for the season, she has another boyfriend, somebody totally different and yes. another pregnancy scare. So, oh, she has another baby. Wh- what? Yeah. In the current year of our Lord 2024. No. <laughs> she's got another baby. <laughs> no, really? With this new boyfriend, JJ. Okay. And they're married or they're engaged or whatever. Uh, sure. Yeah. Sure, Jan. Yes. Wow. I like, looked I don't. Up. Is he? Uh, no, he's cringy looking. Really? Yeah. He's not handsome. He's kind of a dork. But I mean, he proposed to her, so maybe they okay. have a committed relationship. Oh God! You I'm would think it. once you have a child at sixteen or whatever, like that, you would be more careful. You would take your birth control. Like you wouldn't make the same mistake twice. But you yeah. know what? It happens all the time. All the time. All day. Every day. Yep. Well, let's get into the season preview. So it looks like we're going to have two more couples that will join us. I did do some Googling, so I'll give you some context. Okay. We've got one new couple that's brand new to the show, and that's Anaya and Daquan. Okay. They're both 17. Mm -hmm. This was the couple that we saw the preview of where they were like, yeah, it was love at first sight. And we love each other. And he gives her a promise ring. Right. And her mom is like, I've been given promise rings before and they haven't been kept. Right. So we'll see what goes on with that. And then the other couple is Lily and Lawrence. Lily's 22. Lawrence is 21. Mm -hmm. Lily, I guess, was on season one of Unexpected with her first baby daddy, a guy named James. And she had a kid. Let me see it. Did I write it down? Alia. Okay. Okay. And then I guess there were some issues with James being a piece of shit. She returns season four with her new boyfriend, Lawrence, who's this guy who's going to be returning on season six. Okay. And they've been together ever since. Okay. And they have kids together. All right. Yeah. And so is she just trying to marry him? What are we trying to do with that couple? Are we still having babies? They looked older. They don't even look like they're teens, really. Oh, yeah. They're early 20s. But she's got, they've got like three kids. So, and I think two of them are Lawrence's. I think it's going to be showing their marriage journey or something. I don't know. Maybe she's got issues with her first baby daddy. Who knows? And we also see... Kaylee's mom, Mandy, kind of worried about Graham's involvement with the baby after the baby's born because he's not really involved in her pregnancy. Shocker. I don't think he's going to be involved Mm -mm. at all. And then we have Jenna and Aiden having their ongoing custody battles. This is the visitation issues that she's going to be dealing with and her new boyfriend, JJ, and they're not using protection. Oh, my God. Like, what are you doing? So crazy. It's because it feels better without the condom, Does huh? it? I, mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. I'm a gold star, so you I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't think... Okay. Well, what? Uncensored. Okay. <laughs> uncensored anything else in that preview um just some issues between taryn and emily oh yeah some conflicts it's on and popping power struggles emily calls taryn controlling and then she's starting to fight with nate 
and she's like heavy with child. So mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to break up or something. Oh, I forgot. Jenna and Aiden are going to be hiring murder attorneys right? <laughs> <laughs> for their custody battles. Right. Excellent. If yeah. you have to hire an attorney, it should be a murder it attorney. It should be a murder yeah. attorney. So um, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Me so too. This kind of started with a lot of energy and excitement. Yeah. Do you think this is something we can keep with and continue to enjoy? Look, I'm kind of enjoying the trash. It seems very mm -hmm. trashy. Yeah, I think we're gonna get into it yeah. with these couples. Yeah, especially with these parents. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we bounce? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. It really helps us grow the pod, so we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We will be back later this week to wrap up once and for all Bravo's The Valley, so make sure you come back for that. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you, and peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.